Welcome to this 134th Durham Miners Gala. I grew up knowing it as the big mean <laughs> giants of our labor movement. Davy Hopper, Davy Guy, Rodney Bickerstaff, and the great Tony Benn stood on this very platform and talked of the struggles they have won, but the struggles that also lay ahead. Those great leaders forged our workers' arc of history and struggle. Their disputes fought not just for the generation of the day, but to give confidence that we will win the struggles of the future. We celebrate those leaders, celebrate the fights they won, celebrate standing on the shoulders of giants. Comrades, it was the great Tony Benn who said, in every socialist, there are two flames that burn, one against the injustices of the past, and one in the belief in a better future. And now, comrades, it is time for those two flames to rage in every one of us who stand in this field. Because when the welfare state is under attack, as it has been under Tory policies for far too long, it's women who have to pick up the pieces. It's women who suffer most when there's no affordable childcare and they have to go to food banks to feed their children. It's women who provide the social care for our elderly and vulnerable when there's been money cut and cut and cut again from funds that we so desperately need. Labour offers a real alternative and a real future for everyone. Only Labour can end inequality and put the grim years of austerity behind us. Only Labour can ensure a fairer society and only Labour with Jeremy Corbyn as our Prime Minister can govern for the many and not the few. Grenfell for us is at the heart of much of what is wrong with our society. Where the views of ordinary people, including those who lived in that tower block, who made warnings about it, the views of ordinary people are ignored in housing, in workplaces, in local communities. And that shows the injustice that exists in this class divided society where decisions are dominated by the needs of private profits where business is told that they can simply regulate themselves it is utterly disgusting anyone looking at this objectively and people looking back in the future will look at horror at how this has allowed to, be, to happen and i say in conclusion, I think we need to put on the agenda of sweeping the whole bloody system away. Of saying, we want a rational society that puts ordinary people, that puts the majority at the heart of decision making. I'm proud that our movement has a long history of taking on tyrants in politics and at work. The TUC's original demands were for a free education, an eight-hour day, and the right to working-class representation in Parliament. Today, we are still fighting for working people. Everything we have ever achieved, ever since we first met in 1868, TUC and unions, the welfare state, the minimum wage, the right for women to equal pay, our NHS, Everything we've achieved, we've achieved together as workers and as trade unionists. British trade union movement is famous throughout the world. Famous wherever workers struggle for their rights. Famous wherever, opp wherever oppressed people cry out for their freedom. And you enact the idea of solidarity in all, all that you do. Remember that our politics is about fighting for a better world, where peoples live freely in peace, where the treasures of the earth are shared fairly, and where all our children grow tall, not just here at home, but all across the globe. The big meeting is not just big because of the number of people. It is big because of its big values, its big vision, and its big heart. We want the keys to Downing Street, and that's the only way we can change people's lives. We want to take in a government, we want to embody the fantastic great values and principles at this gathering. We will also ensure it's in the manifesto for the second time 
that we will seek for an equal distribution, a much more fairer distribution of the mine workers pension scheme for miners and the families. As comrades here who were involved in the miners' strike up and down this country got battered by the police on a daily basis. We want a review into the policing of the miners' strike in the whole of the country. And we want people brought to justice. And many of the real heroines of our movement too often will never have their names in history. We know that. And when we think about those women who have gone before us and inspired us over those past hundred years, some of whom have changed the country and some of them have changed our lives, the best way to pay back the debt that we owe to those women is to get out there and fight like they did. Fight for our rights, fight for our freedoms, fight for our families, fight for our communities, and never stop fighting until we have true equality and fairness in this country between men and women, between rich and poor, between North and South. We all know that alongside all those fights, there is one burning injustice for the families and communities here today, and that it is we have to end for once and all the government's robbery of the miners' pension scheme. The money in that scheme belongs to the miners and the surplus from that scheme belongs to the miners. And we need a deal that will give it back to the miners. There are a lot of things to do and a manifesto to build. And today we've had speeches on this platform that have helped to build that manifesto for the future. And that's why I'm confident in the future that that man who stood with me in the lobbies might well be in another lobby air soon. He'll be leading the party, but he'll be leading it to victory. We'll beat the Tories hands down. We'll beat the Liberal Democrats. We'll beat the Scottish Nationalists. All of them will fall before us. Give your support to Jeremy Corbyn. I was on the Grenfell March, the silent march, on the one year on from that terrible night and that terrible fire. Awful, awful experience for everybody. The power of a silent march around the streets, recognizing that human solidarity with people and that incredible support given by firefighters, ambulance workers, police, volunteers and so many others to help people in their most desperate hours of need and continuing the psychological and community support that's so necessary. Kensington, you should be ashamed of yourselves in not rehousing all of those people in one year on. Over the past eight years, poverty and inequality and injustice have increased in this country. Wages have been frozen for a very long time. Real wages are actually falling for many people. There are almost a million on zero hours contracts who don't know how much they're going to earn from one week to the other. And there are another 400,000 children living in poverty over the last eight years. And as Dennis pointed out, that number will inexorably increase the longer these wretched Tories remain in office. It needs a Labour government to invest. We put pressure on every country around the world, be they Saudi Arabia or China or anywhere else, to recognise those human rights. I want to lead a government that has at its very core of its international strategy Peace, freedom, justice, democracy, and human rights. Not war, not weaponizing, but bringing that justice around to the West, rest of the world. Sometimes it's the poets that help us see through the fog of the day. I want to conclude this by saying something. Organize together, work together, mobilize together, talk to people in order that they understand there is an alternative to the brutality of the system in which we live. And remember those great people who went before us. And I close with this, The March of the Workers by William Morris. On we march then, we the workers, and the rumour that ye hear 
is the blended sound of battle and deliverance drawing near. For the hope of every creature is the banner that we bear, and the world is marching on. Thank you.